Okay, how to interpret an EKG? Um, the real answer is it doesn't matter how you interpret an EKG. There's no right answer. Okay, this is not like you know someone figured this out as the best way. Okay, the answer is that you have to have a system. Okay, it's like how do you shoot a gun? I don't know. I don't think there's a specific best way to become a marksman, but you have to have a methodical process to get to the point where you're ready to pull the trigger, right? People have different routines for how they get there. As long as it is a consistent process, though, you're going to achieve results, right? Same thing with room clearing, okay? Not all the squads are going to teach room clearing in the exact same fashion, right? But they are all going to have a methodical way to do it so that every single member of that squad knows exactly what every other member is going to do. Same idea here. You have to have a system to look at the EKG so that you don't miss critical points. Because it's not until after you've read 10 or 50,000 of these things that you can just kind of hold it up and go like, yeah, it's this, and throw it away. Okay? I mean, it really does take that long. And, you know, I mean, at this point in my career, I've probably read 250 or 300,000 of these things. But, um, you know, it's, it's a real long time. And, you know, even knowing that I wanted to do this forever and ever, you know, those first 10,000 are rough. Okay? I mean, you really got to pay attention. So, they suggest considering the rate, the rhythm, the axis, the morphology, the intervals, and then go looking for ischemic stuff, like ST segments, okay? That's not a bad way to do it, that's fine. So, here's how you do rate, it's real simple. The rate should be between three and five big boxes. The rate should be between three and five big boxes. The rate should be between three and five big boxes. If the rate is less than three big boxes, it's too fast. If the rate is more than five big boxes, it's too slow. Cool? Okay. Rhythm. What is the source of the rhythm? What you're looking for here is P waves. If the P waves have a fixed relationship to the QRS, the P waves are almost always the source of the QRS. Okay? Now, when I say a fixed relationship, all I mean is a relationship in which the P waves have a very regular pattern to the QRS. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the exact same place every time as we're going to talk about in a moment with type 1 heart block. Okay? Axis. We just talked about axis. Uh, again, go back, review the material again, you know, if you need to look at axis. Uh, morphology. Um, is the QRS narrow or wide? Ignore this double peak thing. That's ridiculous. It's narrow or wide. What they're talking about with double peak, they're trying to teach you how to read a right bundle branch block. That's if it's got a double peak in V1. Intervals. The PR interval should be between three and five big boxes, or sorry, three and five small boxes. I'm trying to make this easy for you. You only have to remember one thing, three to five, okay? Three to five big boxes for the QRS, three to five small boxes for the PR interval. If it's more than three to five um, small boxes, more than five small boxes, uh, you have type one AV block, PR prolongation, okay? Um, the QT interval is uh, from the start of the QRS to the end of the T wave. Here's the easy way to simplify that. If the T wave ends more than halfway between these two QRSs, it's too daggone long. You're allowed to go up to halfway through. If it's significantly more than halfway through, it's too long for the QT interval. We good? Yes? So this makes sense? Am I explaining this clearly? Okay. Um, ST segments we already talked about. They can be elevated, they can be depressed. Never call a change that's less than a millimeter. Just call it eh. I mean, I see it, but, right? All the significant stuff, all the clinically relevant stuff is going to be at least a millimeter. 